Hi everyone and welcome to another Uncast video. Now this is a segment from a larger video where I build an energy efficient Unraid server. Also test different PSUs, compare SSDs versus hard drives, well regular hard drives, power consumption and tweak the setup for maximum efficiency. Now that video is quite long and it's very detailed. So if you're only interested in the build process and the hardware that I used, well, this video is for you. However, if you've got the time and you want a deeper dive into power optimization, PSU testing, SSD versus HDD efficiency, then I highly recommend checking out the full video. Anyway, let's head over to my desk and get started. Okay, so the motherboard we're gonna be using for this build, you can see it's this tiny little board here. Underneath here is the CPU, it's an Intel N100. So what's interesting about this board is it's actually got six SATA ports here. But as well as six SATA ports, there are also two NVMe slots. So for our Unraid server, we could use these for a pool. And if we were to use two of them, we could have maybe a mirrored ZFS pool. But what we can also do, which is pretty cool, is I'm sure you all know what HBA cards are. These allow eight drives to be added to a server by this going into a PCIe slot. And then a cable like this, plugging in here. And this will either go to a backplane, like on the case that we're using in this build that you'll see in a moment, or you can get one, a forward breakout cable that would go to four SATA ports that would be able to connect directly to drives. Now, obviously we don't have a big PCIe slot here, so using this is not an option. But I'm not sure if you've ever seen one of these before. Now these are really cool. They basically adapt the NVMe into six SATA ports. So we can just plug this in. And now we've got an extra six SATA ports on this PCIe slot here. Now before making this video, I did actually test this board. What I noticed about the onboard SATA ports here is these four are pretty fast. If we plug four SATA devices into here, then the drives will run at full speed. But plugging extra drives into these two ports here, these are most definitely slower. Now you don't notice it if you're just reading from one drive at a time, which using the Unraid array, that is really what we'd be doing. But if I plug, say, six drives into here and do a parity sync, these two slots here pull down the whole speed. But putting actually six SATAs directly into here in the NVMe, well, each drive runs at full speed. Okay, so now since the main video was posted, of which this is a segment, we've had some great feedback from our amazing community. And user cat2devnull414 shared some really useful insights about the motherboard that I used in the build. So let's go over what they pointed out. So all of the generic N100 boards, they're based on the CWWK reference design, which is then rebranded and sold by other companies. And there have been several revisions. And in this video, I'm using an older model that has a few quirks. Now the one I'm using here uses the JMB585 SATA controller which only natively supports five SATA ports. So any extra ports are coming from the CPU or being routed by a port multiplier. So this probably explains the speed differences that I was noticing during my testing. And also another issue with the JMB585 is it lacks proper active power management. So this means it keeps the PCIe link active and prevents the CPU from entering deeper power saving states like C8. So the result, higher idle power consumption around the 16 to 20 watt mark, which is what I was seeing in this video. Now here's where things get interesting. There's a newer version three board, which is much more efficient. And this one has a different SATA controller, the ASM 1166. And this natively supports six SATA ports and also doesn't prevent the CPU from being able to enter a C8 power state, meaning hopefully idle power can actually drop below 10 watts. Now I couldn't help 
as soon as I read this to order this board so I can test it out. So check back on the channel soon so we can take a look at that. But another big upgrade the board has is it only has two 2.5 gig LAN ports instead of the four. So this will actually free up PCIe lanes and obviously as it's less hardware should mean it's drawing less power as well. So finally, if you're buying a board today, it's recommended to go for the version three board, which you can get with either the N100 CPU or an N150. Now the N150 CPU is a newer CPU, slightly faster and has a better iGPU. So should be better for transcoding. Anyway, I wanna give a big thanks to cat 2 dev 414 for sharing this info. And I'll link this new board in the description below this video. Okay, so back to the build. So what I find is we can run 10 drives pretty much at full speed by using these six slots here and these four here. And we still got two spare if we wanted to connect other drives as well, but just something to keep in mind that these can pull down the speed of the whole array. So the motherboard obviously takes laptop RAM. This is a 32 gig DDR5 module that I'm gonna pop into here. And another thing we can see is there's an internal header, which we can use to plug in our Unraid USB flash drive, which will keep it inside of the case. Now, I'm not sure really if I'm a big fan of that, because I'd have to take the case out of the rack to get to the flash drive if I ever wanted to access it. So personally, I prefer plugging it into the back, into one of the USB slots on the back. And while we're looking at the back here, we've got four LAN ports and these are all 2.5 gig. So quite a capable little motherboard, I think. And for me, this is gonna be building a backup server that's very low power that I can leave on 24 seven. Now, one more thing about this motherboard, I bought it from AliExpress and I think it cost me about a hundred pounds, which is about 120 US dollars. I think they've gone up a little bit now, but they're still under 150 US. Now, one thing I found when I received my board is there was no CMOS battery, so I had to put one in. Now, I don't think they're actually allowed to ship them with lithium batteries, so that was missing. So that's something to keep in mind if you actually want to buy one of these. Okay, so I'm gonna pass this motherboard over to my son now and get him to build it into the case. And the case that I'm using for this build, I wanted a short for you case. And it's the Logic Case LC4488BWH. Now the front of mine looks a little bit different. It isn't green. The front of mine is actually a blue color. Now including tax, I paid £234. It's probably about 250, 260 US dollars. And I bought it over here in the UK from a company called servercase.co.uk. Okay, so whilst he's putting in the motherboard and getting everything connected up, Let's have a look at some pictures of what the case actually looks like. So this is the front, it's got eight hot swappable 3.5 inch bays. And underneath there's a flap that opens, which is lockable. Now this is quite weird design. I'm not really quite sure why they've done it that way, but if we open up that, well, the lockable door, it's locking away some very precious fans. Now, obviously they must be more expensive and important than the hard drives, but I don't know why they've actually locked away the fans, I don't know, but I guess it's easy to pull the flap and actually access them. But to be honest, on 4U rack mounted cases, I'm used to the fans being mounted behind the hard drives, actually sucking air over them. But this case is designed slightly different. Oh, okay, let's have a look at this part of the build here, because we can see the cables here that we're using. I'm connecting to the drives on the back plane which are SFF8643, so that's the target because it's where the drives are. So the host is where it's coming from and that's the SATA ports on my motherboard. So we've got the target and the host and this cable is called a reverse breakout cable. They look exactly the same as forward breakout cables, but they go from a SATA ports on a motherboard, basically to a backplane on a rack mount case. So we can see here various parts of the back plane. On the bottom left there, there's two Molex connectors, which come from the power supply, obviously, which power up all eight hard drives. And on the right hand side, well, bottom right, that's where my reverse breakout cable connects into the target, connecting the motherboard to the drives. 
And here now in this part of the build, we can see the reverse breakout cable, the host side of it, being plugged into the NVMe SATA port adapter. Right, so let's just speed through this last part where the motherboard gets mounted to the actual case and the last few wires are all connected up. Okay, so next we need to put the hard drives into these sleds here, which just slide into the front of the case. For this first part of the video, we're just going to be using 3.5 drives. Then later on, when we're doing testing, we'll swap all of them out and we'll just run all SSDs and see the power difference of using both. Now, of course, the 3.5 inch spinning rust drives, they're going to have much, 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 much more capacity than the SSDs. But the SSDs are going to be faster. But what I'm interested in is just really seeing the difference in how much power each type of drive uses, and we'll be looking at that later on. Okay, so now all of the hard drives are in their sleds, so now we're just going to push them into the front of the case in the hot swappable bays, and then we're going to be good to actually boot up on RAID and do some tests. Okay, so that's what the server looks like all put together, and that brings us to the end of this segment. Now, don't forget you can watch the full version of this video, or just wait for other segments to be released and watch one of those. Anyway, thank you very much everyone for watching, and I'll catch you in another one.